What's up guys, if you've never been here before, my name's Joe Bun, and I own Bun DJ Company, the DJ's vault, part of Crate Hackers, Bun Gear, which is what this beautiful piece of gear is sitting in, and a bunch of other things I do for DJs. So welcome to the channel. And um, today, we are with my new little friend here. It's called the Newmark Mix Stream Pro. And I was lucky enough to get my hands on it. I think this has been out for a few months or so, but I got my hands on it. I finally set aside some time to play with it. And today we're gonna get into some of the coolest features on this. We're not doing an unboxing. I've already unboxed it. I put it inside the booth. I hate unboxing videos. No offense to people that like those, but the box is a box. It had some styrofoam corners in it. Woo, <laughs> it's unboxed, here it is. So we're gonna talk more about the features and the things that I like. So let's get into it. So the first thing you'll notice is we're getting ready to do a demo of the Newmark Mixstream Pro and what is missing? Laptop. Know why? Don't need it. What? You don't need a laptop, Joe. No, you don't need a laptop. Why? Because this is pretty much the future. If you'll look back a few videos ago, I did a video on BeatSource. BeatSource record pool, if you will, streaming DJing. Okay, go find that video. I'll put the link down below. Go watch that video, in fact, before you maybe even watch this video, because they're gonna all tie together with this unit right here, and your mind is gonna be like <sighs> So what does this run on? There's no laptop. There's actually spaces in the back. There's two USB uh, in the back and an SD card slot. So taking this out of the Bun Gear Command Center, I wanted to show you a couple things that you can't see when it was under the Bun Gear Command Center lid. Link down below to get yours. XLR outs. RCA outs, and then like I was mentioning, you got your USB, if you wanna run uh, USB sticks. You got an SD card, um, basically the same thing that's in that camera, right, Jeb? Can't you use an SD card? And then you got your power. Pretty simple, nothing on the sides. We saw the top already, speaker, speaker. And then we got our uh, front or the side where the DJ would be. You got your quarter inch and eighth inch headphone jacks. And then if you want to run a quarter inch mic in, you've even got a little mic input. This unit does only have one mic input if that's important to you, and it's actually here on the front, so keep that in mind. There's nothing in here. So what is it running on? This bad boy has built in Wi-Fi. So all I did, I mean, I'm telling you guys, I watched nothing, zero videos on this thing. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just see how easy this thing is. Sure enough, I look at the front of the unit. Right here, there's a button that says Wi-Fi. I hit it. It's got a touch screen. Nice little seven inch screen, I think. I hit the button that says Wi-Fi. I logged into my Wi-Fi, just like I do on my phone, my iMac, or anything else that you have. I logged in, I'm already logged in. You can see the icon up at the top right here. I've got a great signal right now, and I'm ready to start streaming DJing. What? So here are the different sources that you can pull music from. All right, so I'm gonna touch this icon up in the top left. You got Beatport Link, BeatSource, again, link down below for my video on BeatSource and what it is. SoundCloud, which you all know. Tidal, which is basically Spotify's biggest competitor probably. And then even you can lock your Dropbox to it because I keep all my music in Dropbox. I'm sure somewhere in the DJ's vault or on here, is a video on how I back up all my music to Dropbox and I make duplicates of all my computers in case one ever goes down. Going back to this, so I'm a BeatSource guy. I hit the BeatSource button. I logged in with my credentials, username, password, just like you would on your laptop if we had one sitting here or anywhere else. And lo and behold, I hit the button down below the BeatSource logo, it says playlists. And I went to my playlist, which I set up already on my uh, browser version of BeatSource. So I've got a few here. Now I have the monthly top 20. I've got the wedding top 100 or 200. Wedding dance oldies, wedding dance modern, 80s, 2000s hip hop, essential pop edits. Some of their playlists, some of my playlists, and I've stored them in my playlist. Now, I said this on the BeatSource video, there is a section called Locker when I have my laptop that I can basically take a thousand songs, drag them to the locker, 
and even if I lose Wi-Fi, I'm still good to go. On this, you do need to be on Wi-Fi when you're streaming. It will load the song, and if Wi-Fi happened to die during the playing of that song, the song is going to keep playing because it's in the internal memory. But when you try and go and load the next song and you're not on Wi-Fi, you might have some problems. I'm not positive of that feature. Double check me on that. If I'm wrong, quote me down below. But I turned off the Wi-Fi a little while ago when I was DJing, tried to load a track. It would not, but it was still playing the one that was playing, if that makes sense. So let's go to this Essential Hip Hop Edits. You'll see it says updating. Now, it does take a little bit sometimes to load a song. It's not as instant as doing your drag on Serato because again, it's pulling it from the cloud and dropping it to the different decks. So I'm gonna go to this Essential Hip Hop Edits playlist. You can see all my, all my good stuff here. We got Nice For What Drake. So all I do is just click on it here on the touch screen and then I can load it to deck two. Boom, it went over to deck two. It takes a second, it loads, Boom, it's ready. So it was that fast. Now, let's say I wanna mix that with, how about Nori with the intro? Because again, BeatSource has intro edits because it's almost more of a record pool than it is a Spotify or Tidal. And I wanna put that on deck one, download, done. Analyze, done. So it was that fast. Uh, what, what was that, 1.5 seconds, a little bit slower than just loading it off your laptop on the internal hard drive. And now, again, I'm ready to play. Now, what do you also notice? If we were looking at the back of this again, there's only one cable coming out. You know what that is? To the wall, power. How do you hear the music? This little joint has speakers built in right here. Top right, you got a little volume knob. So all in one unit, no laptop needed. I guess if I had a drawback, I wish they had made it battery powered because technically you could take it, sit on your lap uh, on the couch and make full blown mixes off of it, or at least practice mixing on it by using the internal speakers. So again, they sound good. They're perfect for, you know, you're not gonna play a party with them, let's be honest, guys. But if you wanna practice, I just had my headphones on a second ago and was just kind of rocking, you know? I mean, guys, this thing is crazy. Like, it's so uh, easy, I guess. The only thing, for me, the, the drawbacks would be, you know, you do need to be on Wi-Fi. I play a lot on Pioneer gear, so I need to get a little bit more used to the responsiveness of the buttons. Um, the way the cue and this, the play are a little bit different, like the way I, I'm more of kind of slap the button guy than I am like a, a cue kind of guy. Um, but I mean, other than that, like I've gotten used to this thing. I was playing maybe 45 minutes before Jeb showed up to start shooting today. Totally comfortable with the unit, was playing killer mixes just off the speaker that are on here. You know, like it, it's it's really a simple, simple unit. Now, a couple other things I wanna point out, I love these little hold effects and, and kind of release effects here on the top. You do have multiple more options in this internal menu besides just the Wi-Fi. Oh, damn, I just noticed this. You can record as well. I mean, so you can make mixes and record them right here with it sitting on your lap. Um, what else did I notice? You've got your user profile where you can change things like uh, where the song starts, your cues and loops and how those work. The display, if you wanna lock the deck so you can't throw a song on top of a playing song, how you want the library to look. The deck colors, like if you wanna change the colors. I mean, Honestly, guys, it, it, it is something that I'm pretty blown away by. Like, I'm just sitting here looking at this even, even more. Like, you can change the way the, the meters look, the way the mic comes through. Does it come through the speakers or not? The, you can set up your time zone. You can set up how your sensitivity is on the platters, how you want the scratch mode to be, the screen brightness. It's so intuitive and I love it. Now, one more thing that I want to point out that I did uh, notice as I was browsing around the menu and it's sitting right here on the front. 
You guys have probably heard me talk about SoundSwitch if you follow me on uh, the DJ's Vault. You're a member of the DJ's Vault, link down below. But SoundSwitch is basically built in here. And what SoundSwitch is, it will run your entire light show by reading the waveforms of the song. So basically you go in and, and it takes some work, I'm not gonna lie. Like you need to kind of watch some videos, you know, read some tutorials about this thing. But SoundSwitch basically analyzes the song and then builds your light show around it. You can go in, key in what kind of lights you have. If you have a couple of Chauvet Intimidators and you've got some American DJ up lights, you can put them in SoundSwitch and they will basically create a light show based on whatever song is playing. So another super cool feature. Uh, one last thing I'll mention is I am a Serato guy by trade. I've been using Serato for a decade probably. This actually runs on Engine DJ or Engine OS as they branded it up here. <laughs> Again, it was so easy to use, easy to learn. I played around with this thing for a half hour at the most and I was mixing songs. Again, it's just about getting used to where the waveforms are, how the graphics look, how the layout is, and I probably could play with it a little bit more internally and actually do a better job of, of seeing it how I wanted it. But I just wanted to, like I said, take it out of the box, not watch anything, not read anything, hook it up and see if I could start playing immediately or mixing and actually being semi-accurate and it happened within 30 minutes. So super easy to use, super intuitive, tons of features for such a small unit. I don't know if you guys can really tell how small it is. We're gonna get some really sexy B-roll and some pictures of it for you so you can really see what's on it and on the back and on the front. But all in all, man, this is such a solid unit. I think it's around $600 retail price. I mean, I've seen a lot of people say, oh, that's a solid backup unit. I have to agree, you know, it's it's almost, I would rather a backup unit be a little bit skinnier. You'll see the depth of this. So you could almost fit it in a backpack and maybe even a little smaller. I really think it could be a primary unit as well though. It's so well built. I would obviously have a laptop hooked up to it so I was ready in case I did happen to lose Wi-Fi or whatever. And as usual, like I said in the Beat Source video, I would have their first dances and all their special stuff on my internal hard drive instead of trying to bring it out of the cloud. So there's a few little caveats here and there and a few little things that, you know, that maybe bother me as somebody that's probably more used to a Pioneer unit. But all in all, this thing is super dope. Um, I think the price point is perfect. It is the future. I think DJing sh pulling from the cloud is the future. I said that in the Beat Source video and I couldn't be more hype about it. I'm super sad that I can't keep it but I am gonna be giving it away uh, for the three year DJ's Vault anniversary sometime in mid February. So, uh, and we might even get it branded up really cool. So stay tuned to that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. We're gonna try and bring you more gear videos in 2022. And those seem to be what you guys really like. And also you like to see us out on the road doing the gig logs and things like that. Got Saquon back with me for 2022. He'll be with me shooting those you know, videos as well. Jeb sometimes comes out and shoots even better videos when we're out and about. And if you got something that you wanna see, we'll try and get it. Leave a comment down below. And as always, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. We greatly appreciate it. Again, comment, like, share, whatever. Thank y'all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little quick overview or quick review or my personal take on the Newmark Mixstream Pro. See you next time.